Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. We are going behind the scenes today. We're gonna to go to my studio and check out how I lit this image. Okay, so it's gonna be a fairly long video, but it's broken into three sections and I will leave timestamps in the comments. Now the first section is gonna be uh, behind the scenes in the studio, It'll be about five minutes and we'll look at each of the different lights. Um, I'll show you the exposure from each individual light. We'll look at the equipment we used and see exactly what each light is doing. Then we're going to jump into Photoshop and do a speed edit. So I've recorded the entire edit process, although mostly in this image is frequency separation, retouching, color balance, that kind of work. And then finally, we'll be about three or four minutes at the end just to go through the layer stack. And I'll talk you through the final output, all the different layers that make up this image and um, what their role is in the retouching process. And we'll just kind of turn them on and off and go from the before to the after in a couple of minutes. So I don't want to waste any time, guys. I'm being as quick as I can. Let's just get Get straight into the behind the scenes section so I will see you on the other side. Okay, hey guys, we're back in the studio finishing off this series of images. I did want to try and get them all done in one day so I could talk about how quick and easy it is to shoot bottles. It's not true. It takes ages, it's really annoying. Um, but here we are anyway, it's late on day two. Uh, I've come in in the evening just to finish this off. So, I'll give you a tour of the lights and then we'll jump into Photoshop and see what we do about retouching. Now, what I'm trying to do with this series of images is do the minimum amount of retouching, which means getting as much right in camera as possible. And that means good lighting. So let's see where we are um, and I'll give you a little tour. It's gonna to be very similar, in, uh, at least with the initial setup, to the first one that we did in so far as we've got a nice set built. It's nice and woody. And we've got this two meter by two meter paper scrim. And on the other side of the scrim, we've got uh, an SK300 Mark II. It's in an undiffused, it's got the internal baffle, but it's not diffused across the front and it's just a regular strip box. It's firing into the paper and gradating across the paper. The reason for that is we should have a hot spot of light in a strip next to the product. And as it gradates away, it should come to a roundabout black here, so we'll never see the reflection of our light source in the product. Um, this is super cheap, 17 pounds for a roll for 50 meters, I've used four. So I can't be bothered to do the maths, but it's pennies. And for what it does for us, it's well worth it. Standard tracing paper, strip of sellotape, best diffusion material that you can find. So this is hanging up. It's flagged to keep any light off of the back of my um, set. And I'm gonna fire this now and we'll have a look at what it does to the product. Okay, now we can see straight away, this is a nice shot. And it's not nice because I'm doing anything particularly clever, but we've got um, a nice edge light because the strip box is very, very close to the um, edge of the bottle. So the, it's actually hitting the paper right next to the bottle and giving us a nice clean edge light down this side here. Um, we've got a nice gradated um, light around the neck of the bottle and no sign of a reflection of a strip box or anything like that. So this is doing its job. Behind the bottle, I've got a piece of silver card. It's just reflective card. It's standing up on a piece of uh, masking tape. So there's nothing glamorous about this, but it's reflecting, it's angled. So the, the left-hand side or the right-hand side as we look at it is touching the back of the bottle and is causing a hot spot. The light's coming through there really intensely and because it's angled away it, uh, from the product in order to catch the light and send it through, it's getting darker as we move across the product from right to left. Now you can see in the top left hand corner there's a little bit of an inconsistency there and that's to do with the shape of the card that I've cut out. I could start again and make another one but um, I'll be here all day fiddling with cards so I think I'm going to fix that in post. Everything else about this though I'm quite happy with. So let's look at my second light. I'm gonna turn this one off. And we'll look at the background light. Um, not the background light, sorry, the light that I've got here in the background of this shot. Can you see it? Do I need to come here? There it is. And the modeling light's blown. And that's really annoying. 
and it keeps happening. It's been happening all week. I'm out of replacement bulbs, so I'm using Godox SK300s and Godox SK400s. I really like them. They're blowing bulbs all the time. If anyone's got any experience as to why that might happen, stick a note in the comments, because I'm open to hints and tips here. It's driving me crazy. And it made it really difficult to set this light up. Just had to keep firing it and moving it and firing it and moving it. But if I fire it now, I'll show you what it's doing to the image. Okay, it's really nice. Um, so this is the thing about having a nice, attractive product. Everything you do looks good. Um, so we've got a harder edge light down the right-hand side. We're picking out the shoulder of the bottle. And as the light passes across the front, we're just picking out the highlights on the raised logo in the glass and putting a little bit of detail into the text. But also what's nice is this red, the addition of this red color on the left-hand side of the bottle. And that's caused by the light passing right through all of the whiskey um, and um, yeah, passing out of the left-hand side of the bottle. So we really are perpendicular and shooting like right through the bottle from one side to the other, adding a highlight on one side and a really nice glow as the light comes through the liquid and out the other side. So that's my product lit, essentially. So after that, I'll just show you quickly, it's not very interesting, but the backlight is literally just, ooh, literally just another SK300, it's got a standard reflector, it's gridded so that it's a nice tight pool of light directly behind the product with um, a diffusion sock over it so it gradates nicely away. The thing about gridding a uh, reflector is you tend to get a, a quite hard circle of light so you can control the light really nicely but by popping a diffusion sock over the end of it you get that nice transition from um, lit into shadow. So that looks like this. And it's literally just lighting my background. Now my background is another one of my printed backgrounds. So that cost me 20 pounds. Uh, I'm gonna start collecting them, I've got a few already, but they're really cheap, really cheerful. Roll them up in uh, a paper roll, store 100 of them in your studio. Lots of variety, lots of choice, really easy to set up. And as long as they're falling off out of focus, they're convincing enough to be a wooden background. In this shot, I think it looks fine. So if I put all three lights together, This would be my final shot. But I feel like there's not quite enough detail on the label at the front. Um, I'd like to bring out a little bit more of the branding. So I've put one last light in play. So it's a four light setup all in. And it's another, is it 300? Yeah, it's an SK300. It's got a snoot with a grid. Um, the modeling light's working, which makes it nice and easy. Sometimes, if you're, especially if you're at a distance, it's hard to see exactly what your modeling light's doing. Careful not to burn your fingers, but by moving your fingers in front of the grid on your snoot, you can see exactly where your light is um, affecting the, uh, the product to the set that you're working on. So I've, I've spent a little while just positioning this and getting it just right. And if I bring this final light in, You'll see the difference. It really makes the label at the front of the product pop out. It really does a lot more for the branding. And there it is, there's my final shot. So I think this is okay actually. Uh, straight out of camera, it's looking all right. But we're gonna jump into Photoshop now. We'll fix that gradation, um, whether there's a bit of an inconsistency in the top left-hand corner of the shoulder of the bottle and see if there's any other cleanup to do. So I'll see you in Photoshop and we'll crack on. Okay, so we're in Photoshop and we are starting off with a classic frequency separation workflow. I'm using the Nino Batista plugin for this and um, you just saw me throwing together a solarization layer. That's so that I can clearly see all of the detail in front of me. I use that as a check layer and I'll talk about that in a future tutorial, but um, I don't really want to go on about it too much here. I do want to mention though that the Nino Batista plugin for frequency separation um, I think is second to none and it's not that it does anything particularly special when it comes to setting up your layers but you, I don't know if you noticed in that um, that brief moment of um, setting up the, the frequency separation there that there's a visualization step which gives you the high pass on the right hand side of the screen and the low frequency on the left hand side of the screen. Now every other method that I've ever used for frequency separation lets you see one or the other and then apply it to your image. Um, it's really difficult I find to kind of visualize how 
um, setting your high frequency settings uh, is going to um, output your low frequency or if you start with a blur what your high frequency settings are going to look like at the end of that process so even if i wasn't going to use the nino batista plugin setup i cannot recommend it highly enough as a visualization aid prior to doing your frequency separation it's about 30 um, dollars i think it's well well worth it so all i'm doing here is working on the high frequency there i'm cleaning up inconsistencies in the glass and obviously specks of dust and so on but also there's a lot of um, additional texture in the side of the bottle and where we've got these highlights um, coming down the left hand side of the bottle a lot of that information sits in the high frequency layer so i'm able to just clone it out and i'm not affecting the layer underneath it now once I've done that, I'm running over with the um, with the mixer brush and then I'm actually going to start painting in some of the um, colors directly onto the tonal layer with the healing brush and just the freehand um, paintbrush. So I'm literally just going to sample some of the colors from around the area that I'm working on and paint them in. And because I'm using a, a frequency separated workflow, when I'm working on the high frequency layer like I am here, I'm able to just roll straight over it and pinpoint any of the um, details that catch my eye and know I can remove them by replacing them with the texture from the surrounding area and it's not going to affect the tone underneath. Once I move on to the tonal areas, again, I know I've got a free hand. At the moment, I'm just um, sampling out the transitions in the detail layer on this huge, you know, horrible mark. Now I'm gonna use the healing brush just to clone in some of the color from around. The reason I'm doing that is because there is texture in that color, it's dappled. So I don't just want to go straight in with the mixer brush or a paintbrush. But once I've got that area kind of covered, I'm just gonna go in with sampled colors and paint them in by hand on a number of layers. I, I kind of put these together on a number of layers and then um, stamp, merge visible the layers, merge them together once I've got them doing what I want them to do so I don't end up with a crazy project with a million layers. But once I've got this all set up, I just jump in with a mixer brush and go straight for the classic frequency separated mixer brush workflow. So if you're comfortable with frequency separation, you've probably done a bunch of work with the mixer brush in the past. If not, um, I will do a tutorial on frequency separation and you'll be able to check out my workflow. Um, the mixer brush is the main kind of, the main protagonist for doing your work on the, um, the low frequency layer. But I still think there's a lot of space for um, using the healing brush, a lot of um, use cases where the healing brush and just painting, just freehand painting are going to give you the best results. And then you can just finesse them like I am here. Once you've done the main body of work, you can kind of finesse that and blend it together with the mixer brush. So here we are just adding in the last bits of um, frequency separation workflow, just getting rid of these last couple of details that were distracting this horrible hair that was stuck to the uh, wood and I didn't notice it before we did the shoot and we're good. A few little bits of cleanup along the base, check with my solar visualization layer and we're into the finishing touches guys. A little bit of sharpening, I think two passes of sharpening on this particular image. Um, one overall sharpening and something extra for the lettering. Once that's done, it's just the finishing touches. So we're talking about um, curves for contrast, levels for checking. We're using the full dynamic range in the image, little bit of additional saturation, and then drew this in, this mask in with the pen tool to make sure that that saturation adjustment only affects the bottle. Um, didn't want it leaking into the background, so it's just affecting the whiskey in the bottle. So let's jump into Photoshop and have a look at the layer stack. Right, so we're in Photoshop and what we're looking at at the moment is a composite. So each of these layers has been set to lighten mode and I'm adding them in uh, one at a time. No snoot, hard right, diffuse left, background. The no snoot is all lights firing without the snoot and I would have then added in all lights firing including the snoot but um, I decided not to bother with any of the composite work on this occasion. But um, I would normally have my... Um, my single exposure with all lights firing 
and also load in to my um, Photoshop file all of the individual lights. You just don't know when you might be able to pull out some detail from one of those. So if you are shooting in the studio and you've got like a four light setup, I would always recommend taking your final exposure and then each light individually, just keeping them just in case you never know when they're going to come in handy in Photoshop. So here we are with all lights and here we are after frequency separation. This was such a quick, easy retouch, guys. I'm going to show it to you super quickly. Firstly, I'm turning off the high frequency detail layer. So you can see everything here looks very blurry now. If you're not 100% sure about how frequency separation works, just subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do in about two weeks, I think, from today, um, I will be publishing a high frequency, low frequency uh, kind of workflow that will explain all of this to you. But you can see this was what I had originally in my low frequency layer, which is just my color and my tonality. And because I'm not dealing with any detail at all, just the blur of color, it's very, very easy for me to fix this, where the, um, the reflection from the card in the rear was, uh, was causing all this artifact down the side of my bottle. And these highlights here, uh, just caused by inconsistencies in the glass, boom, sorted took me no time at all and then we just add the detail back in again using our high frequency layer but if I show you the same thing I've got the same workflow with my original texture here and this is the one that I've worked on clipped onto this uh, original high frequency texture layer and so this just tie these up look at all these inconsistencies in the glass so you you can take a really nice photograph but if the glass isn't made you know to a very exacting standard you are going to need frequency separation to tidy that up so there we go guys frequency separation and that was all i needed to do on this one i wanted a very simple image there's no clever compositing nothing special we've added some sharpening and i've actually done that in two passes i felt like the lettering wasn't quite sharp enough so i've added my original sharpening and then just very subtly a second round of sharpening on top of that my output curve, which is if you've, um, if you've seen any of my tutorials before, you know, I always kind of do the same steps on my output. I'm going to set a curves layer to luminosity only and just put a very subtle S curve on trying to tweak out as much contrast as I can into the final image. Same thing with my levels layer. It's very, very subtle, barely does anything in this image, but I'm just trying to make sure that when I look at my histogram, I'm using the full dynamic range that's available to me in the image. And finally, in this case, I just added, it's very, very subtle, but I've added some additional saturation. You can see I've um, hand drawn this mask. This is done with the pen. Uh, it's super easy. Guys, everybody hates the pen tool. I used to hate the pen tool. Now I love the pen tool. So I will have a tutorial on that coming up in the near future. Uh, drawing outlines of stuff with the pen should be a really quick, really easy, really effortless um, task. And it shouldn't uh, be as emotional <laughs> as it used to be for me. Um, so, okay, guys, I've drawn a mask. You can see here just in my red channel, I've sampled the red area that I wanted to add saturation to and added a touch of saturation and it's only affecting the bottle. It's incredibly subtle. You would barely notice it, but um, it was important for me. And that's the final image. So guys, um, if there's any questions about the, especially about the, um, you know, the frequency separation stuff, but if you've got any questions about any of the techniques that I used, any of the masking, any of the additive lighting and that kind of stuff, just drop a message in the comments, drop me a DM if you'd rather do that you can reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or I'm sure you can probably even find my phone number if you search for it but I'm here for you man uh, I struggled with all of this when I was learning it um, it's an absolute nightmare when you first look at the Photoshop interface so yeah if I can help anybody just drop me a message and I will um, I'll do my best for you man I will respond to you so any questions hit me up if you're interested in any of the stuff that I've got coming up frequency separation advanced masking and stuff just hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video